Hi everyone, so today I want to talk about root rot and I have a lot of experience with it, very unfortunately. Um, we've got it whooped now. That's pretty much as good as you're gonna get. I, I sure don't ask for any better. Um, but this last summer, we had, we had it really bad. And um, this was all uneven. Uh, we just had really bad problems. We had to cancel orders a week, which really hurt right during the middle of summer. So definitely had have experience with it. And I think I found something that worked. So I'd like to share that with you. All right, so how to deal with Pythium, how to get rid of it. Um, this, what we did is we just switched to a sterile system. And so if you're doing aquaponics, that's not gonna work. But it's, we were doing biological before. Uh, we were using a product called Quantum, and then there was another one called Arbor True Bio. And the idea was, you know, to put in good biological microbes and they would eat the quantum. And I think in some systems that worked, but for us, it just, it just didn't. We had, we had really rotten luck. So what we do now is, this is bleach here. Um, seven and a half percent sodium hypochlorite, which is the active ingredient. And then we use hydrogen peroxide. I'll put in a little clip of um, the percentage and everything. So this right here is a barrel on a skid we just got in. We don't use very much, but we happen to just get a shipment. 35% um, hydrogen peroxide. That's what we use. And so our, our treatment plan is, well, for the last few months, we haven't done anything because we don't have any Pythium, but when you get Pythium, if you have a really bad case, it's gonna take a while to work through it. So these here, this is 2000 square feet growing area in, in one of these squares here, one of these pools. And my theory is, is that the Pythium does not live in the water so much. It, it, it uses the water to transport itself, but the Pythium, in my opinion, and by the way, everything I'm telling you, I learned from someone else. I learned from a grower in Arkansas. Nothing original with me, but it's living, the Pythium, in my opinion, is living on the roots. It's living on the bottom of the raft. It's li living on the side of the pond. It's not living in the water. So the amount of water you have doesn't matter as much as the amount of surface area you have, in my opinion. So it, we had it quite bad. It wasn't as bad as where, like where you can see brown rot coming up into the plant. We didn't have it that bad, but we had it pretty bad. I'll put some pictures on the screen, hopefully they're not too blurry. But we just had those brownish uh, roots, kind of the sticky reddish roots, and yeah, just root rot, straight up root rot. And so what we did for our 2,000 square foot of pond, about, is we did 12, this is, this is a one liter container, we did 1,200 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide every four days and then we did 600 milliliters of bleach every four days and so like on monday we would do hydrogen peroxide then skip tuesday wednesday we'd do bleach thursday friday we'd do hydrogen peroxide again and it takes a, it takes a while to start seeing improvement and then all of a sudden you'll you'll get some damage on your roots and I am not I am not knowledgeable enough yet I haven't been through enough cycles of this to know like to, to, to reduce your your dosage rate before the roots burn but then what we did is we kind of nipped the roots a little bit and it would it would you would see the plants wilting you know when they normally wouldn't be that was a sign that's a fantastic sign for sure in the younger ones um, that, hey, I just did too much bleach or too much hydrogen peroxide. So then I would cut it in half. So then I would go to 
600 milliliters of, of hydrogen peroxide and 300 milliliters of bleach every four days, you know, alternating or two days alternating. And I did that until we were down to like very, very low, like 50 milliliters of bleach. One time I put in, no, one time I put in 50 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide and it nipped the roots. And I was like, okay, we're done. We work through all the pythium because what happens is when you do those high dosages at the beginning, when you have a lot of pythium, the, the, whatever you're putting in, it goes after the pythium first. And once it eats through all the pythium, then it'll get the plant, it'll nip the roots. And so then you can cut the, then you can cut the dosage in half and, and keep doing it again. And it'll work its way through the pythium for a week or two, and then it'll nip the plant. So you cut it in half and you just work, you work through all that pythium like that. And it takes a long time. Like if you got, if you have a bad infestation like we did, which it wasn't crazy bad, but if you have a bad infestation, it'll take, I mean, it took us a good four, four to six weeks to get through it. And that's been, probably that was mid-summer so that's probably three four months ago now and we haven't had any pythium yet like you saw at the beginning of the video like our roots are fine and and yeah we haven't treated for yeah three four months we haven't put anything in the water and it saved us a lot of money because now we're not buying that arbor true bio or that quantum like the the beneficial biologicals so that saves a lot of money and this stuff is cheap like it's a it's a cheap um, alternative to that other stuff. Um, one other thing that I should add is you have you have those biological products. You have a nano you have nano bubblers. You can run water chillers in the summer. Um, yeah, increase aeration stuff like that. You know all those products they in the past they've helped us grow better product but what what did all those things have in common they all reduced pythium so that's been my theory now is just instead of all this other stuff well aeration is still very important but instead of all this other stuff just get rid of the pythium go to the root cause so um that that's really helped us out and i think that we have suffered from pythium and root rot way more than, than we realize. I think we've blamed a lot of our issues on that. So anyway, I hope this helps you out. Um, pythium's everywhere. You always have it. It's just like, how bad do you have it, basically? Um, that's, my opi that's my opinion. Pythium is pretty, pretty much omnipresent. So we're just real quick here. This is our SOP for pythium. So we do this every week. We walk around. We take photos of any root that are not white and bushy. So those are good roots right there. I'll just slowly swipe through these. So those are really bad pythium infected roots. I'm not totally sure about this yet. Yeah, I might be wrong on this. But it doesn't seem like healthy roots leave cloud like that. This is basically what I said in the video. So these roots, they're, they're getting whiter, but you know, they're, the pythium is receding. They're healing, but the pythium's still there. So those were nice bushy roots, or fairly, fairly good. And then that brown color means they got zapped by bleach, too much bleach or peroxide. Thanks for watching. You can find more great resources and awesome products over at greenease.us.